Hi, this is Shadi and today we're gonna be visiting some Kenjutsu grappling footage and we're gonna see them from the viewpoint of a grappler, Judoka, BJJ, etc. So what we will do today is watch a fight between a Kenjutsuka and I'm pretty sure it's a knight and also uh, go through a little bit of Kato Ryoji's DVD. I'll link his channel in the description or his video in the description and also uh, watch some Tenen Rishin Ryu techniques, how they coincide greatly with sword fighting and also to watch them as a judoka. So here, let's see the knight versus Kenjutsu and they start. You can see the differences in sword and the armor. He strikes the kote or the wrist and gets the first point. Um, a double edged sword versus katana strikes again the kote and gets another point. The clinch, he pushes down and gets the strike. So you can either push down if you are strong enough or you can uh, help it with footwork. So here we're gonna see uh, how footwork and ashiwaza are gonna be very helpful. So here the knight changes his stance, the clinch tries to go for kochigari pushes down with his hands as he performs a ko soto gake. So here ko chigari fails, hooks on the outside and pushes down. No need for sleeve and lapel. Um, just as long as there is upper body contact, you can really go for throws if you have the correct timing and the correct feel. So he went initially for ko chigari, this one, but then he changes from the outside to ko soto gake. He didn't need to manipulate sleeve and lapel because you have two people grabbing weapons and they're pushing against each other. As you dominate the pushing battle and their posture is compromised, that's when you can engage in footwork and you can actually get the takedown. So Kuzushi can be performed in all sorts of ways. It can be an Atemiwaza, it can be jacket uh, type Kuzushi, it can be clinching and so on and so forth. So you have many options on how to unbalance someone before throwing them. So the fight here continues. I apologize for the quality of footage. I found this on YouTube. It was like this, someone filming a video. So I truly apologize, but nonetheless, we can still see what is happening. So here before the fight ends, they go for it one last time. And then they engage, they strike, tries to go for Kochigake and strike the head, the men, and gets the last point and wins the fight, clearly dominating uh, the full fight. So now let's see Kato Ryoji, here he performs like a Waki Gatame from the engagement of the hands and gets an arm lock, here you can see clinching, tries to go for foot sweep, clinch again, tries to go for Uchimata, he gets rolled over even though he uh, performed the throw. So. Um, this is something that it is a bit different. We say, you know, in the street, if you get thrown down or taken down, that's it, it's finished. But here you have the protective gear. So you still have a fighting chance, even though you've been, you've been taken down. So here he engages in pins, rolling and reversing the pin and getting a arm lock to completely incapacitate his opponent. This is very helpful in the battlefield, self-defense when your life depends on it. There is weapon, there is clinching, there is takedowns, there is uh, engagement in Neiwaza very quick to just snap the arm. So this is the stuff that actually, you know, this mentality that you can find it in Judo's rules that, you know, if you don't engage quickly in Neiwaza, the fight is reset. So you always have to be quick on both on your feet and on the ground. And that's the mentality I prefer for self-defense. So this type of discipline, Tenen Rishin Ryu, I would say it goes great with Judo here. Again, more clinching as they are trying to strike each other with swords and as someone is you know going forward he uses their momentum to use a sutemiwaza a tomoenage circular throw and gets the takedown so on the battlefield with weapons with armor you can actually afford to go down um, we say you know on the street don't go for sutemi i agree uh, but you know when you're not wearing protective gear it can be dangerous you don't know where your head is gonna land your back so uh, once i landed on my side and it hurt like hell and it was on the mat so imagine what can happen on the street so but when you're wearing armor you can go for it and you have a weapon in your hand so you can engage if things go wrong so here he takes the back clinches from behind tries to put him belly down which is a very dominant position and then stabs with the sword so uh again these are very realistic elements uh, i really wish they would do something like this with tan kendo like the knife uh 
like very similar so here they're trying to push and as you are winning the pushing battle the shoving and then you know, the close contact of the upper body then you can engage in footwork um, this is what i mentioned earlier um, i do believe that kendo regular kendo should have at least the foot sweeps that we've seen uh, in the past foot sweeps in kendo are just absolutely sublime and they're very effective and also here you see the osoto otoshi he didn't reap he just put his leg planted it and then uh, dropped the body over the leg or over the axis of the leg or soto otoshi a major outer drop uh, from the pushing there's no grip fighting but this is something that's special for you know sword fighters um, when they we get close upper bodies are really con uh, in contact in close contact and that's when you engage in pushing pulling um, using someone's momentum maybe you want to you see them pushing towards you you either go for sutemi or a sasai or it will be the opposite where you are pushing and then do a backwards throw like kochigari ochigari deashibarai etc so um this is um, a very interesting topic this uh, tenen rishin ryu the way they uh, do it in my opinion it's uh, it goes great uh, with judo now that it's available for the public in japan i believe in kyoto I leave a link uh, in the description for the video where I got the techniques from uh, and uh, you can watch it of course and see it. So uh, we've talked about self-defense a lot recently with all the footage that I've been showing and uh, talking about the elements of uh, realism being absent in sports context. For example, when BJJ they take the back, they get the figure four lock and then they start to craft the rear naked chokes sometimes for minutes now i understand these are black belts and it's uh it's not easy to get the rear naked choke as opposed to against a beginner but still you are putting yourself in a uh, prone position uh in judo they teach you that you know if you don't do it quickly the fight is reset so when you go to the ground you do it now or never and that's the mentality that i personally uh prefer and here you can see a lot of military elements present alongside the techniques that we know in judo and in bjj so this is why i say this is something that would be great to practice alongside uh, judo so if you have anything else to add uh, please uh, let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon i have exclusive content for the patrons only i post there once a week uh, you see stuff like behind the scenes full podcasts and just uh, videos for the patrons only uh, my main content uh, content will always be here on the channel so no, don't feel obliged but your support would mean greatly this was shady and as always thank you for listening